Ever thought about trying to get rid of those wretched D-link couplings? Well, this is how I did it, with a little bit of help from my mate Richard. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie, and today you join me on a Chadwick Swift, and that is a quick 10 minute video on a certain subject. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a review of the Acura Scale Siphon Gs, and there should be a link up here to take you to it. Now, during that video, I did a comparison between the new Acura Scale Siphon G and the old Lima version. I mentioned about the improvements that I'd made to my Limas. One of those improvements was replacing those dreadful D-link couplings. And one of my valued patrons said, well, how did you do that then, Charlie? Can you crack out a video? So here we are. So here are my two identical Lima Siphon Gs. And hopefully you can see the difference there in the couplings. These are the dreaded D ones. And these are the more ones that we're used to seeing now on today's rolling stock. Now, if I pull these off, you can now really see the improvements that we can make because you can appreciate the size difference. It is enormous. So how do we go about modifying them? Now, clearly we need some bits. So we'll start with the couplings. Now, these couplings are from Backman Stock number is 36-026, quantity 10, and they'll cost on eBay around about £13. Next, we move on to the screws. And the trick is here is, is the post in packing and try to buy it buy on eBay from the same seller. So these are M2 times 6mm A2 stainless steel machine screws, slotted pan head, bolts DIN 85. Now all these details will be in the show more tab. £4.17 for 50. Next we have the washers and these are M2 crinkle washers, A2 stainless steel, st stainless steel wavy wave, Ooh, whatever that is, £2.99 for 50. And then finally the nuts which are M2 hexagonal half lock stainless steel nuts, thin A2, £4.25 for 50. Now all those items, sorry, the nuts, bolts and washers total £10.41 for 50 plus postage and packing. What a gift. Now before we start cutting up our locomotives, <laughs> a word of warning, because these old D couplings are actually quite robust and you tend not to get derailments due to these, they just look dreadful. But if you might have a helix, let's say, and you're running down a helix, then these wagons can push it against each other and the couplings can ride up. And you're pro more prone to do this with the modern couplings than you are the old D-Link ones. So just to be pre-warned. The other thing is, is when you get these two pieces of rolling stock that you want to convert, please make sure that the receiving plates are of the same height. So do a bit of research before you get the snips out. Now I'm going to convert this old um, Backman 3 car DMU. Um, and what I shall do is I shall convert this, uh, these two couplings here so we can do a comparison of the new for the old. I'll also remove the end couplings because I don't intend to run this as um, a, a multiple multiple unit <laughs> but if I want to I can always then add in one of these smaller Backman uh, couplings at a, a later date but in the meantime I'm going to remove the end ones convert these two and then we'll compare those to those. Uh, first thing I need to do is put my glasses on right so here is our um, the dummy car what I'm going to do first off is pull out this bogey and the next thing I intend to do is just to snip away this D-link. Now you could use something posh like a pair of sprue cutters but to be perfectly honest it's a waste of money to use them on those and all I'm using it is a basic pair of snips and in we go and we cut through here and here and that's the main D-link gone. Then we need to remove the coupling 
So that will come out just like that. And then what are we left with? Well, we do want to get rid of this ridge assembly here. So that needs to go. So all we do is Blimey, it's tougher than I thought. Let's try the sprue cutters. Yeah, somewhat sharper. Ooh, don't know where that went. And there we are. Now the, the piece we're interested in is this top area. So I shall just take a, whoops, nothing straight here. So just take a file, all I'm gonna do I'm only interested in the top area is to fire that off, make sure there's no lumps, and we're kind of there. Beautiful. Right, let's pop that back on. And the front of our train does look a little better. Right, now the serious bit, the back end. Now we've had a practice, haven't we? So now we can do this one. So, oh, and by the way, if you don't own that, then when you get one of these little saws, then you can all, obviously always saw through there. Right, so let's get the main D-link out of the way. Remove the cupping itself, get rid of those. And then we're faced with this lump. Now, the reason I mentioned that before was when you look at the... couplings from Backman, they need to sit on top of, oops, got a few out there, they need to sit on top of this area here, so they need to sit like this, and to that end this small ridge has to go. So we'll take out that ridge, I suppose you could just as easily file it down but I don't really see the point so if I can kind of do it where you can see so that's that bit gone okay so now you can see how this will bolt onto there but before we before we bolt it on what we need to do now with this coupling is remove these two screw areas the, sorry, the two areas where they're supposed to be screwed down, that's those two outer holes. So we can next remove those. Like so. And there we are with our basic coupling ready to be fitted. The next thing we need is a pin vise with a right drill to screw it in. So now it's a case of drilling the hole. Now the hole needs a 2.2 millimetre drill and you can sort of try and place this on and drill through but I always find I get in a bit of a, a pickle there trying to do that. So all I do is get a marker pen and then when I think it's in the right place, you know, central, um, which isn't in the centre of this piece here because that piece, you know, we need to drill about here is where we need to go. So I sort of mark it with me pen pop it on does it look about right yeah and then have we got enough material around there yes we have so all I'm going to do now is just drill through there I don't want to drill through me mat or my finger for that matter I think it would be sensible to put a little block of wood here. Anyway, there we are, our hole. Okay, so straightforward really, isn't it? It's not rocket science. So we pop our coupling on. Um, you can either put the screw up or down. It's kind of up to you, really. Pop your washer on. This is a test for your... Uh, Dexterity now, isn't it? Come on. I think we've got it on a couple of threads. Little screwdriver.
Okay, seems pretty good. Coach. Back into place, and there's our little coupling. Now you can start to see the difference. Right. Now what could we do with this? Well, you could sort of shave some of that metal off, but I really don't see the point. So what I shall do is convert the other end of this one and then put the two together. And as you can see, this really is a Oops, I wonder where that went. Now the longest bill, the longest bit, which is my uh, blunt drill. My best guesstimate. Just making sure you can see this. Back to the coupling, snip off those two lugs. Everything's on the move here. Pop that onto there. Pop goes the screw. Real test of dexterity, isn't it? On goes the washer. Now the way I do it is I hold the nut underneath and then turn the screw. I find that's kind of easier than trying to turn the nut. So turning the screw and then hopefully it will bite onto the nut. Like so. And that goes on to my coach. And then we can see what we've achieved. Now, isn't that so much better? And the alignment is perfect. Now the scale distance between the buffers on the modified couplings is two feet and on the unmodified it's two and a half feet. Doesn't seem a huge difference, but they certainly look a lot better. And of course, if we wanted to be closer, we just need to drill the hole that much further back. Now, of course, we need to do some testing. So as you'd expect, I've whacked it on the layout and here it is coming off the helix. Now I can't deny I've had some breakaways, so the job isn't finished just yet. And what it is, it's, um, it's just imperfect alignment between the couplings. Now, I've had a, as I said, I've had a couple, but I'm trying to hopefully film a breakaway. But every time I get the camera out, it won't happen. And it's not going to happen this time either, is it? No, let's try and reverse it. It's going through the points, I'd hoped, but... Nope, that's a bit more speed in the helix. No, I'm sorry, I can't replicate it. Anyway, I'll show you the modifications that I'm going to do. Now the problem's occurring between this trailer car and the first class end of the centre coach. 
And if I zoom in a little bit, hopefully you can see that the coupling on the trailer car is actually pointing upwards. So what I need to do is make these two align perfectly. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is to get that trailer car coupling to uh, become horizontal and then I may need to adjust the centre coach accordingly. Now the coupling area is quite springy so there's no chance of bending it and the coupling itself is just hard plastic and uh, so that you can't bend that into position either. So what I'm going to attempt to do <laughs> with my faithful old Dremel is I'll take the coupling off and I'm going to shave some of the plastic away and put an ang angle onto the, the, the level of where the coupling was, if you see what I'm getting at. Anyway, let's have a go and see how we get on. Now, perhaps with a sheet of paper behind it, you can see um, how much out of alignment the coupling is. So we'll whip it apart. And then with the old Dremel is take off some of this material. So I'm just trying to get the hang of how how this will work. Give me that washer. So if I come in there like that at an angle and grind it away. Okay, let's give it a go. More speed. If you're ever interested in buying one of these and you can't find it, I get mine from squirestools.com and they're known as a slitting disc. Right. And that looks to be about right. Um, I'm going to reassemble it, but I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to reassemble it with a screw from underneath. It sort of looks better, I think, rather than seeing the, the nuts and the washer sort of hanging down. If of course I've taken too much off and I need to pack it up again, um, I'll use tape, masking tape, because it is very, very thin, um, because plastic card would just be too thick. So we'll pop this back in into the coach and have another little trial. And if I hold it up now, with a piece of paper behind it, hopefully you can see that it appears to be a little more, well, horizontal if you know what I mean, but vertical. So uh, if you can see from there. Right, let's have a look. Right. So what do we think? Well, to me, they look pretty perfect. Marvellous. Just what we needed. And then running back in with the assembly. Beautiful. And if I zoom in a little, you can see that on this one, the screw now points upwards. And on this one, it points downwards. And I think pointing upwards, it's a little, it's a little more hidden. So as I'm sure you gathered, it's quite a simple operation really, isn't it? A couple of tools and you're done really. Um, there, 
away from sort of ordinary coaches and wagons, of course, you do get an issue with locomotives because um, this bogey here is the drive bogey and this is the pickup. So you can't just pull these off as you can with the, those old backman ones there. But when I modified this one, all I did was um, whip the cover off and then that gave me easy access then into this kind of area. Lovely piece of cake. But of course, ordinary coaches and siphon G's, um, it's just a case of shaving off what you need, you know, with a scalpel, checking your alignments and cracking on. The trick is, is not to obviously go bonkers and with, with a, a Dremel or whatever and ruin um, your stock. But as I mentioned, if you do take too much off, I mean, if a tape, a layer or two of sort of black insulating tape will bring it back up. So it's not the end of the world. And um, a good test, you know, make sure you're not getting any breakaways and a good um, a good inspection to make sure the alignment is is, uh, is there. Lovely. And this is a Chadwick Swift, isn't it? it? Must be the longest Swift ever. Right. Hope you enjoyed it. A Chadwick Swift. There's the button if you want to help the channel with the old Patreon. There's the subscriber button and a video here and here. See you next week.